The brand new RTX 3070 Ti has landed. Is this the GPU to buy in 2021 and beyond? Well, in today's PC build video, we're going to find out. I'm going to cover off not only the 3070 Ti, but all of our other components today and explain why I made the choices I did. I'm going to build this PC from start right through to finish and then boot it up and test it with some of the biggest gaming titles to see whether the 3070 Ti is worth your money or whether it's another GPU you just can't can't buy in 2021. Let's do this. I'll come back on to our GPU in just a moment because I know that's the most exciting bit. But first, let's take a look at some of the other components that make the build possible. A B550 ITX motherboard from Asus ROG is a great choice. It comes equipped with all the features we need, support for Gen 4 SSDs, and even compatibility for up to a Ryzen 9 5950X. That's right, this motherboard can support 16 cores and 32 threads in a tiny ITX. ITX form factor. The RAM or memory for the build is provided by Corsair, a 16 gigabyte kit of their Vengeance RGB Pro, works fantastically well and fits the white colour scheme really quite nicely. For storage, I've got Adata's XPG Spectrix S20G. It's only a Gen 3 drive, but it's a fast Gen 3 drive at that, and it features a little bit of RGB. I mean, just look how cool this thing looks. No need for a heatsink in our system because we've got an RGB M.2 drive. For the processor, I've picked up AMD's Ryzen 5 5600X. It's a superb 6-core 12-thread chip that's going to work well for this system. The Intel CPUs, believe it or not, are actually a decent value option, but for the 3070 Ti, a 5600X is a great match. Other components include an NZXT Kraken Z53 cooler. It's a bit extravagant. There's cheaper options out there, but the screen on top of the CPU looks awesome. Really dig this from NZXT, and it fits with the whole NZXT theme we've got going on. Power once again, is provided by NZXT, who haven't sponsored today's video, so don't worry about that, but it's a great choice. I've loved doing NZXT builds recently, so it's great to have hands-on with these components, and an 850 watt power supply does future-proof us to a degree. 750 is the absolute minimum I'd go for with an RTX 3070 Ti. Speaking of which, let's unbox it and see just how good this card looks from NVIDIA. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that it actually uses the 3080 and 80 Ti style cooler design. This is more beefed up than the one we saw on the last gen 3070, or I should say the current gen 3070. The 70 Ti is just intended to slot in slightly above and fill a void in the Ampere architecture between the 70 and the 80, something which becomes particularly apparent if we show the graphs on screen now, firstly without the 70 Ti and then with the 70 Ti. I've been pretty vocal on the channel, including in a recent GPU comparison video in the card section now, about how the 60 Ti is just a better choice than the 70, because unless you need the extra power for ray tracing, it's just as good without the hefty price tag. Now, of course, price tags are a little bit ominous in 2021, although recent developments that discourage mining of Ethereum and, of course, increased supply from NVIDIA should hopefully start to fix things before the end of the year. But I've got my fingers crossed, I've got my toes crossed, I've got absolutely everything crossed. So much so we won't go into, um, into too much detail. The card, though, fits into a really nice form factor, and you can see spec-wise on your screen now that it provides a decent bump up from the last gen 3070. One of the notable improvements being much faster GDDR6X memory. So even though we haven't gained any more RAM, we have gone much faster, which should help our gaming performance. Now then, we've covered off all the components for today's system. Let's go ahead and get it put together and cover off any of the quirks involved in the process. CPU installation is always the first step and it's nice and easy. Pull the arm up, line up the CPU triangle with the triangle on the socket and the processor is installed. No stock cooler, of course, today because we've gone for an all-in-one, which we'll look at a little bit later. This is followed by the RAM today, a white RAM to fit with the build's colour scheme. Would have loved to have seen a white ITX motherboard, but just couldn't quite find one that was going to work in the system today. As much as the M.2 heatsink as well is aesthetically pleasing, we of course won't be keeping this on, as we've gone for an RGB M.2 drive. And frankly, it would be a tragedy to lose out on all the RGB aesthetic. If you'd like to learn more though about all the components talked about today and find latest pricing and availability, that will be linked in the description below and in the cards now over on geekawatt.com. So go and give that a read if you get a second. Case-wise, we have gone for a white and black aesthetic. I'd always say as well, you should cut away from you, not towards you, but um, do as I say, not as I do. And I love the powder-coated paint finishes on NZXT chassis. It's not even out the box yet, and it looks bloody gorgeous. Bloody gorgeous. Ow! I get a static shock from every case I ever touch. That was a big one. That really hurt. 
I'm not being funny, but is this not the most adorable case? I can't get into it. Is this not the most adorable case, there we go, that you have ever seen? Look how cute that is. And the motherboard, of course, will slot in nice and easily in the back here, just like so. Love it, love it, love it. The CPU cooler is actually the next component today, and I'm a little bit worried about clearance in the case, but there's only one way to find out, and that's to actually put it together. I'm gonna take these risks so that you guys at home don't have to, so um, stay tuned, because this could get interesting. First things first though, I'm going to just remove the front panel of the case. It does require a little bit of welly, as us Brits would say. And then I'm hoping that we can install the radiator just behind the front panel and then the fans in front of that. In theory, fingers crossed, only time will tell. If we can get that installed a little something like this, then in theory, we should have enough room for the graphics card. In theory. So then, it's moment of truth time. The fans are in, the radiator's in. It does look a little bit tight, I'm not gonna lie. It's a bit 50-50, but let's try and get it on. And we will, of course, test out the temperatures a bit later before anyone starts to panic. So it's provisionally, it's kind of in. Oh yes, okay, it clicks in. It's a little bit firm. Bit of resistance on the left side, but I think we might have just about nailed it. And that looks so sick so far. I'm so happy with that already. All that's really left to do then is install the power supply. But first, let's do the graphics card. Let's see not only if it fits, but also kind of what it looks like in the system today. Now we've been pretty impressed by the numbers we've been able to gather from the 3070 Ti. The new releases from Nvidia with the 3080 Ti as well have been strong. A little bit too pricey, but with the current scalping situation and lack of availability, that's not so much a concern. This moment in time. When the market does return to normal though, the performance you're able to get is actually pretty astonishing for this card's price tag. Are we seeing price bumps over the last generation? I think we probably are at this point even at normal levels, but still these cards provide a huge leap over what we saw with the 20 series, which is of course what these are intended to replace. I do think that this fills a longer way to gap in the stack between the 70 and 80, and we'll go into more detail as to where it fits in the benchmark section in just a moment's time. First though, let's Let's go back, let's pull our PCIe retention clip back. Let's remove the rear PCIe covers and then slide the GPU in. I'm so excited. Here we go, let's go ahead. That actually looks okay so far. That's nowhere near as tight as what I'd expected based on the measurements, not only of the card, but also on NZXT's website. In fact, it seems after all, we might have been able to put the fans actually behind the radiator. Would have been quite close, but probably would have worked. One thing you really mustn't underestimate with this case though, is the clearance under the GPU. The Founders Editions are quite thin. They fit perfectly within a two slot form factor. If you're going for a two and a half slot or even a three slot design, it's not going to fit when you take into account this white NZXT accent piece. You can remove this, but that kind of defeats the point in my opinion. So just make sure that you measure twice, buy once, and don't, you know, don't buy a case that doesn't fit your graphics card, because that's never a good situation. Provisionally though, I think it works really well with the build aesthetic. So much so, the black on the back plate carries down from the motherboard, with the lighter colours splitting it up with the white accents of the case. I'd go as far to say this might be my best looking ITX build ever. Let me know if you guys agree down in the comments below. Let's go ahead, screw the graphics card in and plug up the power connector. Try and hide that as best we can and, uh, and go from there, I think. And then all that's left to do is pop in the power supply. This won't be a full cables and wiring guide, but if you're looking for one of those, get subscribed as we've got one coming. Let's get the power supply all wired up and then boot the system up to see how well the 3070 Ti performs. But first, in typical GeekerWatt style, how good the whole system looks in an epic glam montage. Roll the montage. <laughs> Awesome stuff. Now we've seen just how good this system looks, let's take a dive and see just how well it performs. On your screen now is a summary, a snapshot view of all the different gaming benchmarks we tested out. Anything here that supports ray tracing or DLSS has it enabled, and you can find the full unedited gaming benchmark runs for all the titles linked in the card section now. Let's take a closer look though at some of these titles and kick things off with GTA 5, an older game but still one of the most popular titles on the market. At 1440p high settings tested in the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode, we 
got an impressive 145 frames a second on average. Tested out using both NVIDIA FrameView and MSI Afterburners Revertuner. Call of Duty's Black Ops Cold War is next up, and this is a title that supports both ray tracing and DLSS. First up at 1440p high settings, with NVIDIA's DLSS enabled, that's their AI-backed resolution scaler that helps you to increase your frame rate quite dramatically, we got 141 frames a second. This does drop down to 63 frames a second when you enable ray tracing, but we're still above the 60 FPS mark at 1440p high settings, with both ray tracing on and off, so pretty impressive all around. The next title we tested out is the latest update of Call of Duty's Warzone, which does of course support DLSS 2.0. At 4K high settings with DLSS 2.0 enabled, we got a really impressive 128 frames per second on average, with 110 and 95 for the 90 and 99th percentile result, and DLSS here really helping us supercharge our frame rate, more than 50 frames a second more than with it disabled at comparative settings. Not bad going. Apex Legends is next up today then, and here at 1440p high settings, we got just shy of 200 frames a second. Some of you will probably think, James, why didn't you test at 1080p, you know, medium or 1080p competitive settings? Well, at 199 FPS at 1440p high, there's not really much point. This is a solid 50 frames a second more than what we got with our 3070, and around about 20 at less than what we managed to get with the 3080 Ti. So the 70 Ti is positioning itself really quite nicely. Valorant then is next up today here. We got 351 frames a second on average at 1440p high settings. Yes, it is an easier game to run in 2021, but still hugely popular. And this is around about 20 frames a second more than we got with a 3070, and around about 30 frames more than we got with a 60 Ti. So not a bad result, really. Cyberpunk is next up today then, and here we once again tested with both DLSS and ray tracing to see what the best settings are. At 1440p medium settings with DLSS enabled and ray tracing disabled, we got 100 frames per second with 86 and 76 for the 90 and 99th percentile results, while turning ray tracing on still managed to get a 68 frames a second, leveraging of course the power of DLSS. Around a 10 to 12% gain over the 3070, which was pretty strong anyway in ray tracing applications over the 60 Ti, but all in all the game looked great, no lag, no stuttering, pretty smooth, a happy day all around. The next title on the list today and the final game is a bit of Fortnite. At 1440p high settings we got 160 frames a second but James we want competitive at 1080p. Well don't worry we've got you back 213 fps on average at 1080p competitive settings where you tune everything down to low, set the render distance to far and you're off to the races. We would test ray tracing in Fortnite as we think visually it looks good, but you guys have said you'd rather have the frame rate in a game that's just so competitive. And that pretty much wraps it up for our gaming benchmarks today and of course the whole video. If you enjoyed it, give it a big old like rating, make sure to get subscribed. Thank you for watching though, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.